But what I'm going to talk to nonprofits about gaining traffic growth is to not think about your website as this basket containing all of the content of what you provide, your mandates and what you're driving for, what you provide and your don donating donations and your drives and your volunteers. That's great. But traffic growth is more effective if you narrow in on one kind of topic. So you want to think about a topic that's inside of what you do that might have a few subtopics to help you think about this content you're going to create around this traffic growth. And you want to reuse content that you already have that you can repurpose as page content, post content, and opt-ins, which you're going to get to in the next step. So I often say to nonprofits, do you have any old brochures that you had printed back in the days of yore when people could actually come out and like take brochures from your hand? Is there any content that's kind of out of date, but you already have the asset files for that? Did you participate in a webinar earlier this year or a summit or a symposium with, with what your mandate's all about with other organizations and you walked away with great content from that? Did you, were you in older newspaper reviews? Do you get asked the same questions over and over? Is there any content that you've already made that you could turn into something that would help turn folk who don't necessarily know everything about your, your organization, but they're interested in the topic that your organization is all about? And also researching similar content from other orgs just like you and saying, well, they have a great perspective on this, but they're on the East Coast. We have a different perspective because we're here on the West Coast. Or that information's really out of date. I think if we could add about this, this, and this due to the new uh, provincial funding that came out late earlier this year, we could really rock this content or improve it. So it's really important from that perspective to go ahead and number one, turn off your phone so you don't hear it go off all the time. There we go. But also to think about what these topics can be. So I wanna know, from this, I'm going to do something a little live right here. Someone in the chat want to offer up a topic they want to brainstorm on, and I'm going to show you how I go about that topic and how you can figure out not only what you already know about, but from a website perspective, are people looking for this information? Do people want to have this? Basically, keyword research with Ireland is what I'm going to do for you live right now. So Eli, is there someone in the chat that wants to put up a topic they're thinking about covering on their website? Sure. How about watershed restoration? Watershed res restoration. I know, the okay. dangers of live demos. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so whatever you see on my search here, I have a, br I have a breadth of uh, clientele as well, and I love weird and wonderful things, but okay. So watershed restoration, excellent. So we, this is what we're all about. This is our jam. And we're thinking, okay, Alison, we're talking about traffic growth specifically today. So I'm going to say, what can we talk about or what do you have on hand that other people are looking for? They don't know your organization from the mole on their hand. They have no idea who you are, or maybe they have misconceptions about who you are, or maybe when they think about your mandate, a different, like, you know, maybe they keep thinking of UNICEF or some other huge nonprofits or charity events, right? So what I like to do is I type it into Google, and I just start seeing what's coming in here. Of course, I'm in Halifax, so I'm going to get something a little bit different than what y'all will get on your own um, searches here. But the first step I do is I just see what's happening here in the drop down. Because what's happening is Google is telling me this is what people literally typed in when it came to the term watershed restoration. So we have watershed restoration jobs, water restoration definition, grant program, plan, coalition, Idaho, Missoula groups. So that is one thing to think about with that. So I'm wondering from the person in the chat, is there one of these that makes the most sense for us to drill down a little bit further? Maybe grant program? I wonder. Uh, interesting. Yes, yeah, Stephanie actually works in the grant program area. So that, yes, Stephanie is reinforcing yes to grants. Okay, sure. So the next step we do is we need to understand, and, and you know, this is important from an SEO perspective as well. You can write the greatest content out there but there's only 10 spots on Google's page one. And I know that's some levity there, but also like roughly 1 million pieces of content are published every day and about 96% will never be seen by a search engine because Google and Bing and Yahoo and DuckDuckGo and all of those, they only have so many spots on page one and page two, right? So the next step you wanna think about is, well, when I type this in, this is Allison in Halifax, Watershed Restoration Grant Program, who is already being chosen by Google as page one? And you can see here that I have wildlife.ca.gov, gov, 
I have AA County Org. I've got CWCB, so I got one in Colorado. So, okay, cool. There's some Canadian here, but there might be some opportunity for us. Uh, and I can see here that in their meta descriptions, they're all making sure they put in the word watershed. And let me see here in Alberta. And I'm just wondering, oh, I didn't get one this time. I was kind of hoping there would be a people also asked in here, but that's okay. So what I'm doing is before I start writing content, I'm like, do I see... I mean, I can't because I'm not the, the watershed restoration expert here, but you would start to actually click through these pages and read and digest why did you think these pages came up first? Were they answering certain questions? Did they have a long format to them? Did they have a lot of things you could download? Were they vouched by a lot of other government programs? It's really important for you to understand in the context of what you're searching for, how who else is out there in that space? And we don't end there because there's also related searches. So Google is trying kind of pulling down their pants and showing you a little bit how they cluster information together. And this will change all the time over time because new terms come out that become leading things. But you can see here that there's also searches for grants for habitat restoration, environmental restoration grants. So again, if, you, if you're talking to your key audience or to your board members or what have you, there could be some terms that will help you to focus in that topic. We're not just going to make content about um, watershed restoration anymore. We might have one about grants, or maybe we had an old webinar, or there's programs here. Another one we can think about would be if I did watershed restoration. Another one is a website called alsoasked.com. And again, these are all notated on my sheet. We can see here what happens if I plug this into watershedrestoration.com or for alsoasked.com. And let me see here, and hopefully it will get chugging along, but it will give you this really beautiful, like almost like a, like a beautiful diagram of where it's organizing people's questions that it's been able to find based on these results. Sometimes it's also a live demo. So Lord knows what it's gonna show up with, with here. And while it's doing that, there's also Google Trends. That's a really great one that you can use. Uh, a really basic example I use Google Trends for was someone wanted to know when they were writing their content, do they want to write the, uh, the acronym RRSP or should they write it out in full? So we went on Google Trends and we plugged in RRSP and then register retirement savings account. And it was by a landslide. No one uses the full write out of this, right? They use it at all. And nah, this is not going to give me anything I think today, which is too bad. It could be it's branching family trees, take up to two minutes, it might be busy. But ideally what this would show you is that it would show you questions that people are asked that you could then organize into content. And there's also a link on here for something called customer camp clarify uh, clarity calls and if you i really do believe that if you're unsure where to go with creating content for your site ask those who are closest to your organization ask the the best volunteers you have the donors that really get your mandate and that customer call is it sounds customer call you like it's made for products but it actually can be used for you to how you could actually do an interview with people that you know would get your organization the best. And that thing is, I think it's 149 for that. It's made by Kate Burgoyne, who is here at Nova Scotia. And it tells you how to do an on-phone interview, all the questions you should ask, how many people you should ask, if you should give them a gift card or not. It tells you how to figure out their journey and all of that. So it's really important when choosing your topic, before you go too far down the mountain, you know, or off the mountain in this case, understand what content you already have, and then use Google to, to kind of help you figure out what's happening. Ideally, it's, and that's just one little piece, but maybe the next thing you want to put is how much do watershed grants cost? And you might see a little block that shows up that says people also asked. Those are questions that you can literally turn into the headings of the content you want to create. Or it might make sense that you go, oh my goodness, that one question alone, we could do a whole topic just on answering how much does it cost? Because it depends on X, Y, and Z. Well, X, Y, and Z are three parts to that little piece of puzzle that you have, which can be fun. There's a quick start. 